Like I'm literally giving you guys the handbook. I'm giving you guys a list. I'm giving you guys everything. I just gave it to you. You have it. You took notes. Write your specifics. You have it. You can grow your hair now. Welcome back to my channel and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys every single thing that you need in order to grow long, healthy, natural hair. I feel like a lot of natural hair influencers, including me, don't really give you guys videos where it's just like, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, right? It's kind of vague, it's kind of like here and there, so many different opinions and things like that. But today, my goal is to kind of treat this as a class. So I recommend you taking notes because I'm gonna give you like clear bullet points, clear lists of things that you need to do. And of course, you know, everybody's hair is different. So some of these things may be a little bit biased towards my hair growth journey, but I do feel like there are a couple of general things that can be applied to everyone's hair growth journey and allow everyone to achieve long, healthy hair. So if you are interested in learning how to do that for yourself definitely stay tuned make sure you give this video a thumbs up click the subscribe button put your notification bell on also make sure you check out my instagram and tiktok for daily content and check out my hair growth products if you do want to use them for your own natural hair all right you guys let's get started okay so before i give you guys all the information i need to put out a couple of disclaimers because I know how some people can be. Number one, let me just say that hair growth takes time and this has nothing to do with you being black. This has nothing to do with you being white or Indian or Hispanic. I don't know if that's a race or not. Forgive me if it's not. Hair growth in general for everyone takes time. It is not possible for you to be like chin length and then grow all the way to tailbone length in two months, right? That is not possible. I feel like a lot of us have an unrealistic expectation of how long our hair is gonna grow. And honestly, you're just gonna have to thug it out for a couple of years. Like if you're starting out for, from a TWA, it's gonna take you about two or three years to get to how long my hair is. For me, I'm trying to get to like hip length right it's gonna take me another two or three years to get to hip length um, when I got my hair cut at the beginning of this year um, I knew it was gonna take me about a full year to get almost back to my regular length which was waist length and now I'm currently like half an inch above waist length because I just uh, did a trim so yeah hair growth takes time so you need to keep that in mind everything I'm gonna tell you if you apply everything do everything correctly it's still gonna take you a good amount of time to see the growth um, especially if you have shrinkage like I do it's harder to tell okay and the next thing that I want to say which you'll probably get the gist of from this video is that hair growth is not dependent on only one factor hair growth is dependent on a lot of things put together which I'm gonna explain to you in this video so that means do not think that you can go and put rice water on your hair and do just that your hair is gonna grow don't think you can go on my website buy my products just use my products and that's gonna grow your hair because it's not I'm not gonna cap for a check like I can be honest about that and transparent that's not how any hair growth product works or any hair products in general work hair growth is about being patient and being consistent with everything that you need to do to grow your hair and it may sound like a lot it may seem scary but honestly once you find what works for you I'm telling you it's a breeze growing your hair is a breeze it's not hard it's not difficult most people struggle because they just don't know what to do and so hopefully this video will help now that I've got that out the way what I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is developing a hair care regimen that is going to help you grow your hair so a hair regimen or another way people say it, it's a hair routine is something that you do on a consistent basis in order to grow your hair and it includes a lot of different factors, but when it put together in a correct order, in a correct way for you, it really, again, is not that difficult. First thing you should write down, there are three main components to a good hair care regimen. You have to have good products, you have to have good methods, and you have to have consistency. Those are the three big bullet points. So just put some space in between them because you're gonna write stuff in between. So let's start out with products. So again, like I said, a lot of naturals think that using one product is gonna just make a huge difference in their hair or oiling your scalp every single day is gonna make a huge difference. That is not true, but it still is important that you have products that work for your hair. Um, you can kind of think of hair growth as, <laughs> okay, bear with me with this example, as a salad, right? In a salad, you have to have lettuce. That's very important. Without lettuce or spinach or whatever y'all wanna do, right, it's not a salad. So you have to have good products. If you don't have good products, you won't grow your hair. But at the same time, you can't just have a bowl of lettuce and call it a salad. And if you do, I'm going to pray for you because that is not a salad, okay? You need dressing, you need croutons, you need bacon, you need chicken, you need ranch, whatever you do, right? You need all those different components as well 
as the lettuce in order to make a salad. So you can't just have a good product and then do nothing else with your hair or then, you know, skip every other aspect of hair growth and think it's gonna work because it's not. With that being said, here is, write this down, a list of all the different types of hair products that I feel like you are going to need if you wanna be successful with your hair growth. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna need is the shampoo. Um, cleanser, shampoo, whatever you want to call it. There are a bunch of different kinds. You can go more on the natural side and do like apple cider vinegar, which is diluted in water, or you can go on the more luxurious side and buy one, or you can make one. Y'all know my hair care line, I have a shampoo on my hair care line, but I make that, but it's technically one you can buy. So, I mean, it's really just up to you, but you wanna have a shampoo. A lot of people are, uh, don't do clarifying shampoos, don't use sulfates, don't um, only use moisturizing shampoos. For me personally, I find that I don't really care. As long as it cleans my scalp, I'm fine. And typically, because I wash my hair every Every four to six weeks I'd like to go for a shampoo that's gonna be very cleansing even if it dries out my hair that's why you deep condition after you shampoo but so yeah so uh, it's up to you like co-washing I would say you know co-washing is good if you're someone that washes your hair every single week switching between a co-wash one week and a shampoo the next so again the way you cleanse your hair is up to you but you need to have some sort of cleanser clean hair clean scalp that is a must when growing your hair. Okay, the next thing is conditioner. So, all right, so this kind of gets confusing, but you need three different type of conditioners um, in your regimen, in my opinion. So, the first one is a detangling conditioner. So, for me, that would be my Aussie Moist um, conditioner. And if you want specific examples of all the products I'm gonna say, I do have a favorite products uh, YouTube video on here, so I will link that above somewhere so you can go check out the specific examples. And they're also in the hair growth regimen and guide. They have specific examples in there too if you want but um a detangling conditioner is basically just something that will provide enough slip so that you can detangle your hair easily that's it you're not trying to get any benefits from the conditioner you're not trying to get any nutrients you're not going to leave it in your hair it's just something to detangle so again for me that's Aussie Moist slap it on my hair detangle rinse it out that's it. Then you have a deep conditioner this is what I was talking about earlier with the shampoo a deep conditioner is or another word for it is a mask, a hair mask. That's something people say too. Um, it's like, basically, it's a treatment that you're going to put on your hair and leave on your hair for a certain amount of time, typically after you wash your hair, and then you're gonna rinse it out. So I like to say every single time you are using shampoo, you should always be deep conditioning afterwards to add that moisture back that the shampoo strips from your hair. Again, shampoo's supposed to strip your hair and clean your hair, so that's not a bad thing, but you just wanna make sure you add that moisture back. Okay, and then the third type of conditioner that you need is a leave-in conditioner. Hence the name, leave-in, okay? This is something that you leave into your hair, so after you've washed your hair, rinsed out your deep conditioner, you're gonna go in with a leave-in conditioner, and this is something that's gonna hydrate and moisturize your hair. So that's very important. Uh, you don't wanna just, unless you're doing like a silk press or something, you don't wanna just, you know, finish washing your hair and put nothing in. This is where you put your leave-in conditioner. This, typically, you put a leave-in conditioner in before you style your hair or do anything like that. So, so the next type of product <laughs> that you need to have, for me, okay, this is controversial, but I think having one butter and one oil in your hair regimen is important. Now, I know a lot of people don't like butters and oils, and again, that is up to you. I don't think that... I think you can still definitely grow your hair if you don't use butters and oils. I'm just saying for me, it makes it a lot easier for me to grow my hair when I have butters and oils. Because butters and oils, number one, they do not moisturize your hair. And I feel like that's the reason why a lot of people don't like them because they're using them wrong. Butters and oils lock moisture in. Water and oil don't mix. So if you put something hydrating, like your leave-in conditioner on your hair first, then lock it in with that butter, it's gonna be very difficult for that moisture to escape your hair. Versus if you just put a butter on your hair, you're not locking your cilia in any moisture and it's not adding any moisture, so your hair is just gonna be dry. I would say one butter and one oil um, is necessary. So like I said, with the butters, I like to apply a butter on my hair after applying my leave-in conditioner. And for the oils, I like to use oil if my scalp is dry. So I love adding oil to my deep conditioner I think it makes a huge difference. Y'all seen that in my wash day routine. I just take my deep conditioner, add some oil to it, mix it up, and then apply it to my hair. Also, if I'm taking out on twists or something, on the rare times I wear my hair, I like to do that. Or if I'm taking down twists and I have like build up, add a little oil, get rid of the build up and all the compacted hair. So I feel like oil is very beneficial now. I'm gonna talk about the usage of oils later because I kind of feel like that is misused, but I feel like having one good butter and one good oil in your routine is great. And of course, if you want one, you can go check out my hair care line. But I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to. You do not have to use my products to grow your hair, but they make things easier for me. 
That's all I'm going to say. Oh, by the way, if you don't want to use butters, um, a great alternative to that is like a thick, heavy cream. So you just do what you want. Okay, so the next thing that you need is stylers. So for me, stylers are um, any like twisting cream or like twisting gel or something like that that is going to give you definition. Because I feel like each product has a very different purpose. So if I'm done washing my hair right, rinse everything out. The leave-in conditioner is going to add moisture. The butter on top is going to lock in that moisture. And then a styling cream or a styling gel is going to help me define my hair and get that definition from a twist out or a wash and go or whatever. So I have one styling cream and then I have one styling gel. And I mainly just use gel whenever I slick my hair back or if I'm doing a wash and go, that's it. I don't use gel just for like a twist out or anything. I like to go more for a cream. I like my hair to be a little bit softer for like twist outs and braid outs and things like that again do what you want now if i am just like gonna you know braid my hair down for a wig i won't add any styling products i'll just do my leave-in conditioner and my hair butter on top but i mean it's up to you but i do think having one styling cream and one type of styling gel eco styler is my go-to for gel doesn't have to be anything fancy okay and the last product that i feel like you need um when it comes to your hair growth is an edge control. Now, the reason why I think this is important is because, you know, a lot of us struggle with losing our edges and not having a lot of edges. And part of that is due to over manipulating our edges all the time. But having a good edge control can help with that. Because if you have an edge control that's going to give you a lot of hold, you won't have to constantly be doing your edges and you won't be experiencing thinning edges from over manipulation. Um, also, I mean, you're natural. Like, part of like being natural a lot of people do their edges so i feel like that's a staple to have now if you don't like doing your edges you don't have to have an edge control um that's not necessary but i just think most people do it so that's why i'm mentioning it like i have one for me i think i use the eco styler edge control um also the black got to be gel is a really good one if you want to hold all right so that should be all the products um that you need for your hair care regimen so that should be under your product bullet point right there. So next thing, we're gonna move on to methods. So this right here is very important. And I feel like it's slept on because you can have all the great tools for hair growth. If you don't know how to use them correctly, there's no point. The first method we're gonna talk about is a wash day routine. This right here is very important. People underestimate how important wash days are to your hair growth. That's where you cleanse your scalp, detangle your hair to remove shed hair, and where you moisturize your hair and like kind of prep it for um, the next weeks to follow or however long you wait between wash days. I just posted my updated wash day routine if you want to go check that out. But I think there are three good components that you need to think about when washing your hair. So this will be sub bullet points. So you should have methods. You should have another bullet point that says wash day routine. And then these are where you're going to write uh, the rest of this. Okay, so number one is detangling. There are so many different ways you can detangle. And I feel like a lot of it depends on your hair texture and your curl pattern. Um, some people like to use white tooth combs. Some people like to use brushes. Some people like to use their fingers. I would say for me, I started off using my fingers. Finger detangling when I first went natural. Then I switched to finger detangling and then at the end using a white tooth comb. And now, as y'all saw in that updated video, I just use a detangling brush. So it really just depends and it's really up to you. Now again, I wanna stress how important having a good conditioner with slip is going to make um, in your detangling routine. The more slip you can get, the more soft your hair is, the easier it is to um, detangle your hair. And y'all saw in that video that I also detangle my hair before I shampoo. And for me, the logic behind this is that my hair is already dry and dirty. So why would I cleanse my hair and make it even more dry? That's gonna make it more difficult to, to detangle. So why not just go ahead and detangle it first and then go in and cleanse it? So that's kind of how I think about it. But of course, do what you want. You don't have to. But that's for me how that works. And also with detangling, you want to know like how many sections. It's to be under your detangling bullet point. The sections. That's very important. For me, I think I do about eight sections. Depending on how thick your hair is or how long your hair is, you can adjust. But I think it helps to know like how many sections to do each time. That way you can also kind of time out how long your wash day is going to be so yeah so sections are important i think that's it for detangling so just pick what tool works for you um, pick what conditioner works for you and then pick like the type of sections that will work for you okay so the next part of your wash day routine that's important is cleansing so it talks a little bit about this when i talked about the shampoo so again you want to make sure that you have a really good cleanser what's going to work for you now there are a couple of different ways to cleanse um again some people do it before they detangle for me personally i do it after i detangle my hair is twisted up from each section that i detangled and i leave the conditioner in my hair 
So all I'm doing is going back in with the shampoo, putting it on my roots, and I just massage. And I mean, some people like to take the shampoo all the way down the length of their hair. For me, I don't really do that. I let the conditioner kind of clean my hair, like co-wash it a little bit. And then when I rinse my hair out, I kind of let the shampoo water run down the rest of my hair. But I don't really make a point to cleanse the length of my hair unless I'm doing something like, you know, a silk press. So that's up to you. And of course, I also do a, I use a massage, a scalp massager. So I just use my hands to work the shampoo down like all over my scalp and then i'll go in with the scalp massager and really get in there so if you have long nails or if you just don't really like um shampooing with your hands that's a great alternative again the way you cleanse is up to you the goal is just to make sure your scalp is clean period your scalp and your hair is clean that that's it however you go about that does not matter okay and then the last thing um for your wash day routine is going to be um deep conditioning so again i feel like every single time you shampoo sorry for that car every single time you shampoo you should be deep conditioning because shampoo strips moisture from your hair because it's going to strip it doesn't discriminate it's going to strip everything from your hair dirt oils and moisture so you want to add that back so i deep condition every single wash day since i wash my hair every four to six weeks Every single wash day, finding a good mask or deep conditioner is going to be very important. And I like to add oil to that. So that's how it works. Now, how you deep condition is up to you. Some people swear by the dryer. I hate sitting under the dryer. I will not sit under that dryer. So just know you don't have to sit under a dryer to get a good deep condition. But I do think that adding heat to your deep conditioning is very important. So for me, the way I go about that is put on a Walmart bag, put on a scarf, put on a bonnet. That's it. That will trap in enough heat for me to really get the benefits of the deep conditioner. Now, again, you can sit on a dryer. I saw this trick where you can, like, take the mouth of your blow dryer and put one, um, like, leg of your leggings on it and then put your leggings on your head or something like that. It's, like, a weird thing. You can look it up, but if you don't have a hooded dryer, but you want to use heat like that. You can do, like, a steam cap. I have one of those from, like, a PR thing that I use a couple times um, where it's just a cap you put on and it, it will, like, heat up your hair. So whatever you want to do is up to you, but just know you do not have to be sitting under the dryer for, like, 30 minutes in order to get a good deep conditioning. It's okay. All right, so I think that is it for the wash day routine. Okay, so moving on to same bullet point under methods, but we're going to add another one. Uh, we're going to talk about moisturizing. This right here is probably, like, a slightly more important than the wash day routine because dry hair is the enemy of hair growth like that is the number one problem that a lot of black women have when growing their hair and it's crazy because a lot of people think it's, it's their scalp so they will you know buy these super expensive oil serums and do all these different scalp massages trying to grow their hair and it's like babe your hair is growing it's just it's dry so in dry hair breaks your hair staying the same length all these years it's not because it's not growing out of your scalp it's just breaking off at the same rate it's growing so it's staying the same length if that makes sense so in order to combat this you need to have moisturized hair 24 7. so y'all know me your girl i figured out the secret to keeping my hair moisturized for weeks without having to add anything to it moisturize it once say moisturize for four weeks wash my hair and repeat if you want to see that video um i will leave it linked somewhere i'm looking at a lot of videos today but just to basically go over that in the general version um after i wash my hair i think i said this a little bit before after i wash my hair everything's rinsed out going with a leave-in conditioner going with the hair butter that's it now of course i do protective style that's what i do a lot so that also does help with locking in moisture because every time you touch your hair you're removing um, moisture so if you are protective styling you're not touching your hair so a lot of the moisture stays in that's kind of what works for me but again don't like butters use a heavy cream but you just need something to keep moisture into your hair because my hair is always moisturized i don't get breakage i reduce my split ends like all that good stuff so moisturizing is key and again if you want to see that method go check out the video that i'll have linked and it'll all be in the description too not just up here on the screen the next method so next bullet point is going to be trims so really there's nothing to this that much the only thing is don't feel like you have to trim your hair every six weeks everyone's hair is different so trim when needed so these are a couple of things that i see in my hair when i need to trim so number one if i do wear my hair out my ends just kind of look funky like they don't uh match the rest of my hair um, when my hair, when my ends become a little bit more see-through, that's a great way to tell. And also, if I'm noticing a lot more split ends and single strand knots at the ends of my hair, like my ends feel rougher. I just gave myself a trim, so my hair feels great. But when your ends feel rougher, that's a great way to trim. Typically for me, I will trim anywhere from 
half an inch to an inch and a half, just depending. But do not be scared to cut your hair. Like, do not be scared to trim it. You don't realize how fast that grows back and more. Because the way split ends work is like, it's your hair that's split. And so the longer that it's left um, untrimmed, it's gonna keep splitting longer and higher and higher and higher. So if you cut it off right where it's at, which may be like an inch and a half, you won't have that problem. If you wait, it's gonna keep going and you're gonna end up cutting off five inches instead of an inch and a half. So that's really important. But again, that might not be six weeks for everybody. For me, four to six months. I just trimmed my hair like, what, like last week? And before that, it was in like either May or June. So everybody's hair is different. Again, protective styling helps me prevent a lot of split ends and bad ends, but everybody's different. You may need to trim every six weeks. You may need to trim every three months. You really just have to watch your hair. And eventually, you'll learn. You'll learn. Like now, it's not a big deal. I, it's easy for me to tell. I'm not scared about not trimming my hair. It's easy for me to tell when I need to trim. It's not, you know, that deep. But I had to learn it. And of course, I mean, use hair scissors. Y'all know I just got hair scissors like for this past trim in the past five years i've never used hair scissors but i did this time it makes a difference okay i'll give y'all that so get you a pair of hair scissors and trim on straight hair blow dried hair um curly hair it's really up to you i personally like to do blow dried hair because i can see it better and i never straighten my hair but um it's up to you it's, a lot of people like do it when their hair is curly too. So just, again, find what works for you. That's the key. General terms that apply to everybody, but the specifics are tailored to you and what works for you. So the next method is styling. This one here is the most like individualistic one. This is what like, this is the one that really no rules apply. Everyone has different purposes. This has nothing to do with your hair type or your hair texture, just how you like to wear your hair. So again, I said this so many times, I don't like doing my natural hair. I love my natural hair, I love my texture, but I just don't like doing it. So I protect the style like 24 seven. You will always see me in either a wig, braids, locks, something, my hair is never out. This is a rarity right here. But that's how I like to style my hair. And so that really does determine a lot of my hair care routine since because I'm protective styling, I'm only doing my hair like, what, every month? every six weeks to me that's easier to keep up with so that's how i go about it but you can be someone that loves doing wash and goes and that means that your routine may be a little bit more intensive but it's it's fine you can still grow your hair but that's gonna determine a lot of different things like how often you need to moisturize and all that good stuff like let's say you want to do twist outs and braid outs that's about every two or three weeks you have to do a wash day like that's up to you so how you style your hair is important just keep in mind the more you wear your hair out the more you're gonna have to trim the more you're gonna have to moisturize the more you're going to have to uh wash your hair because when our hair is out and exposed to the air it automatically gets dry that's just our hair so it's like the less you do that the longer your hair stays moisturized so just keep that in mind now there are plenty of people who wear wash and goes like every single you know week and their hair is long is thriving so it's not like you can't do it i'm just saying it will be different than someone like me that protective style is 24 7. okay so the next thing let's talk about a healthy scalp so I covered this in the previous um, points, but I just want to point out that I don't personally see any benefit to oiling your scalp every single day. I personally only oil my scalp when it's dry. I feel like if you oil your scalp every single day, you're just adding more product to your scalp and it's causing buildup, which causes flakes, which causes the dandruff, which causes you to oil your scalp more. So I personally just oil my scalp whenever it's dry and that's about every two weeks. And the reason why I can keep my scalp from being dry every two weeks is because I cleanse my scalp really well when I do my wash day routine. Also, a product that I just got on my hair care line is a coffee and brown sugar scalp scrub. I've been using that for like the past couple weeks and it's really made a difference. Like exfoliating and removing that dry skin and dandruff really, really, really helps keep you like a healthy scalp for a long time. So you can just consider, I have a DIY version on my TikTok, I think, and my Instagram if you don't wanna buy it, but just consider like exfoliating your scalp. That really, really helps. Just do things to your scalp when needed. I, like, okay, if you want to grease your scalp, grease your scalp. I'm not telling you not to do that. I'm just saying for me personally, my scalp works the best when nothing's on it. So <laughs> I like to keep it clear of any products. When I apply my products, I only go from roots to ends. I do not touch my scalp, like nothing. So you just want to make sure that you are giving your scalp the room to breathe so that you can, you know, proceed in doing what you want to do. With your hair okay and so the final method that i think is important to consider is your edges i talked about this before too I'm kind of covering everything as i go but with your edges 
you just want to make sure you're not over manipulating them again having a good edge control is key to this because if you can have an edge control that can hold your hair for a couple of days you won't have to do your edges every single day you want to make sure that you are not wearing protective styles that are going to put tension on your edges and rip them out that's why for me when i, I do my own hair because i can leave out my edges i don't have to worry about someone putting them in there also keeping your edges hydrated um so i like to go in when i'm wearing wigs especially or braids go in and i like to wash my edges once a week when i'm wearing braids or wigs because i typically have a lot of build up and i'll just add some oil afterwards and that's it so you know knowing how to apply those styles knowing how to you know just take care of your edges that's, that's really it i feel like people who lose their edges know that their edges are going like it's not something that just happens you're like oh my goodness what happened like they know the wig's too tight they know the braids too tight they know they're doing too much to their edges so just be aware of it and you'll be fine oh wait one more i forgot the last thing heat talked about this in my updated um blow dry routine heat is not bad if you know how to use it correctly every single method i've talked about in this video it can be bad for your hair if you don't do it correctly washing your hair wrong can be bad Detangling your hair wrong can be bad. Doing your scalp in a certain way can be bad. So every single thing can be bad if you don't know how to use it. And heat is no exception. Like heat is not this like terrible, like scary thing in the natural hair community that people make it seem. If you take care of your hair and you know how your hair handles heat, it's fine. So three things. Number one, using good heat protectant. So in my previous video, I still press my hair. I use this heat protectant, which is the Chi um, Iron Guard. So that's pretty good. Also, knowing your sensitivity. So my hair is not very sensitive to heat at all. I blow dry my hair on 410. I have a very thick, coarse, um, type 4 hair that's very coily. So for me, it will. I will have to purposely, like purposely damage my hair to get heat damage. Um, when I was transitioning, I would get my hair straightened every two weeks. Never had heat damage. Like I only had the perm at the ends. Never had heat damage. So it takes a lot for me to damage my hair. You can already see like the ends are kind of puffy because um, I couldn't straighten it enough. So it's like there's nothing not reverting happening, right? So that's something that I factor in. So typically whenever I wash my hair once a month, I'm blow drying it because it's like my hair is not going to get damaged from that. And also knowing how often is important too. Like, no one in my opinion should be straightening their hair every single day. Once a week kind of pushing it but you might be okay but i mean if you want to there are plenty of naturals that have healthy long hair that does not heat damage and they straighten their hair like every two weeks so i just think it's uh one of those things you have to learn your hair learn how often you can do it learn what heat protecting works for it and learn your sensitivity and that's really it if you can know those things it's not scary to use heat every time i blow dry my hair i am 100 percent confident i will not have heat damage i'm not worried about it or scared with the silk press i'm like 99 percent sure that i did not get heat damage so i ain't gonna speak that i'm 100 percent sure i didn't get heat damage so it's like i'm not scared about getting heat damage because i know how to work with heat for my hair i think that's it for the methods i think that covers all the methods so you should have what like you should have five or six bullet points under the methods i'm not sure that leads us to the last thing in your hair care regimen that you need so you had the products we had the methods now we're moving on to the consistency and let me just explain consistency does not mean every day consistency does not mean every week consistency is relative so it's different for everybody for me my hair routine is once a month and so i consistently do my hair once a month for someone else that could be once a week you consistently do your hair once a week. For someone else, that could be once every two weeks. Consistently do your hair every two weeks. So consistency just means following your hair care regimen at the time that you need to do it every single time. So, for example, I said never skip deep conditioning when I shampoo. I shampoo every single wash day. So if I decide one wash day not to deep condition and the next month I do, and then the next month after that I don't, that's not me being consistent. I am not being consistent with my hair regimen. Versus someone else, let's say they need to wash their hair once a week. If you skip a week, that's not being consistent. You have to be consistent with it. Now, again, when I talk about styling, how you style your hair is very important in determining how consistent you're going to be. Like if you wear your hair out all the time you're gonna probably be a little bit more you're probably gonna have a routine that consists of you being consistent more often with your hair versus like me once a month is that's how much i can do and i purposely like i said i don't like doing my natural hair so i purposely created a hair care regimen or a hair routine that i can be consistent with that works i could not be consistent with my hair if i wore it once a week I couldn't because I would have to do my hair once a week and I'm not doing that. It, that's just done. I'm shaving my head. I'm going bald. I'm going to be Britney Spears, not Britney Rose anymore, right? So no, I'm not doing that. Everybody's hair is different, but you want to make sure whatever hair care regimen you decide you are consistent with, don't slack off. Don't do it. Don't. And my thing is like the time is going to go by anyways. A year is going to go by. Two years is going to go by. Three years are going to go by. And so if you come up with the same excuse, I don't have time to do my hair. I don't have time to do all this. It's just not going to grow. You have to dedicate the time. And I know this may seem a little scary or daunting, but I'm telling you. For me, it took six months. 
Six months after my big child, I dedicated six months to really learning my hair. And I have been set ever since. Except for when she cut my hair from that silk press at the beginning of this year. But other than that, I have never done any, anything to set back my hair. I have just been consistent with my routine. And of course, don't get me wrong. I've had points where I have slipped up. Maybe like two or three months didn't take the best care. And that's okay. That happens. You know, like if you're depressed and you can't do your hair that understand if you're busy with life or something that's fine but i'm saying going like eight nine months without washing your hair correctly or detangling your hair correctly or just using an insane amount of heat like you can't expect that it's going to give you an obstacle that you have to push past again obstacles are just obstacles you can get past them if you have heat damage you can cut your hair and grow it back that's fine hair grows i'm just saying if you want to avoid those if you want to you know two years from now you want to be able to get to your armpit length or your bra strap length you're gonna have to be consistent that means get my behind up when it's time for me to wash my hair and i don't feel like it getting up and doing it of course filming for social media makes that 10 times more tedious but I get up and do it. I know in four weeks I'll have to get up and do my hair again. You know, so you just want to make sure you are consistent. And again, the consistency depends on you. It depends on what you want to do. It has nothing to do with anybody else. Like, I don't feel like there's any rules that say you have to wash your hair when you do this. Or you have to style your hair this way. Or you, Like, there are no rules. It's up to you. But whatever you set, that's what you're going to have to do. And if it's not working, change it. Don't keep not being consistent. Just change it. <laughs> to something else like figure out something else if you need to you know start protective silence because you can't do your hair all the time start doing that don't just sit there with your hair out and just not being able to do it that's, that's no point you can do it you just have to follow through on what you say for yourself so i think that's it for all the stuff that i want to talk about now my challenge to you is if you took notes which i hope you did Go through the notes and start writing the specifics. Start writing all the products that you want to use, like specifics, write the names out. Start writing the methods that you want to use specifics. Like I'm literally giving you guys the handbook. I'm giving you guys a list. I'm giving you guys everything. So go in there and write your specifics. And again, if you don't want to figure out your own specifics, go check out my hair care regimen, hair growth guide, all that. Write down what temperature you think your hair will work with. Write down how many times you can use heat. Write down how you're going to style your hair. Write down how often. Write down what type of detangling you're going to do. Are you going to use a brush? Are you going to use a comb? Like, just write everything out and that's it. You got it. I just gave it to you. You have it. You took notes. Write your specifics. You have it. You can grow your hair now. Be consistent. Be patient. A couple months, you're going to see a huge difference, but you have it now. You have everything you need to grow your hair. I just gave it to you. It, it's here. Now it's on you. You can't blame nobody else. Don't blame genetics. Don't tell me that I'm special because I did it. No, you can do it. I gave it to you. Now do it. Okay? All right, guys. So that's it for this video. I think it's going to be a long one because right now I'm seeing I'm like at, you know, 37 minutes. But, I mean, I feel like I did my best to give you guys a good amount of information for your hair. If you have any questions, um, leave them down below. I think I will try to put, like, everything written out, like the general points in uh, the pinned comments. So that way you can just kind of copy and paste your notes on your phone and just start writing them down. You know what? I might do, like, a PDF, like a Word file where you can just download it. And then you can um, do that. So if I do that, I will put it at the beginning in the text so you can have it and take notes while I'm talking. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope this really helps you with your hair growth journey. I want every black woman to have long hair. I want to defy stereotypes. Like, I want people to stop making us feel like we are less than and making us feel like our hair is a problem because it's not. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button. Put your notifications on so you don't miss the rest of Vlogmas, y'all. We are almost done. This is the last week. We're almost done, but we can do it. Um, make sure you follow me on my Instagram and TikTok for daily content, as well as check out my hair care products if you're interested in using them for your hair. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.